You can give that hand to Jesus Christ. Make it bigger, louder for Jesus, for Jesus, for Jesus. Let somebody shout the loudest. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please bow your heads, everybody. Can you please lift up your right hand to God and say after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you. My heart is open. Send me your word again. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Shout aloud, Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our hearts are open and receptive. Send us your word again. Illuminate our spirit, man. Grant us grace to be hearers and doers. And we'll give you back all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let somebody say amen. Be the loudest. Please, you may be comfortably seated. Put your hands together for the Lord if you can. You can make it bigger. You can make it louder. Louder and louder for Jesus. Praise God. This morning, I count it a great privilege to be able to stand here to share the word of God with us briefly. And I believe that what God has in stock for each one of us shall be delivered in Jesus' name. For the first and second word this morning, I know you have been blessed. Give the Lord a big, big clap offering for that. Praise God. Since Shiloh began on Tuesday night, it's been from one level of glory to another. And I know that God has not finished with us yet. What God has intended for each and every one of us this Shiloh this year will find complete fulfillment in Jesus' name. In this segment, we are looking at this subject caption, engaging the mystery of thanksgiving to flourishing in hard times. Engaging the mystery of thanksgiving to flourishing in hard times. Praise God. By way of introduction, it's very important for us to understand that the scripture makes it very clear that thanksgiving or lack of thanksgiving is one of the end time plagues. Thanklessness is one of the end time plagues. Second Timothy chapter 3, let's read verses 1 and 2. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall do what? And we saw a lot of that exposed to us yesterday by God through his servant. Verse 2. It says, men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. And then what? Can you shout it loud, please, everybody? The loudest you can. Unthankful. Unthankful. So thanklessness is one of the plagues this end time. That plague will not succeed in catching you on eye. God's servant, Bishop David Oripo has said that thanklessness is a risk. It's a terrible risk. And it's catching the world like wildfire. And of course, as the times begin to get harder, men shall begin to complain the more, grumble the more, become unthankful the more because of the hardness of the season. But I've got good news for somebody here today. No matter how unthankful men in this world might become, that plague will not catch you or I. Can I hear the loudest amen? amen. Let your amen be the loudest. 
discipline. You find many complaining on our street today of every, many, many things that don't even concern them. They complain about the weather. If it's hot, they complain it's hot. If it rains, they complain it's cold. Complain of traffic. Complain of hike and prices of things. Complain even about their husband, wife, children, job. Many are looking for a job, yet many have jobs, they are complaining of it. Complaints on the streets. It's just beginning. It's one of the plagues. And the mystery of thanksgiving is one of the easiest way of overcoming it. You and I will overcome. Yeah. Thanksgiving, we must understand, is one of the mysteries of the kingdom. Ordained for our mastery. Whatever may be pulling others down with thanksgiving, you and I will rise up. Thanksgiving is ordained for our flourishing, especially in hard times. And you know what? The good news is Thanksgiving is a choice. It's not a gift. No one has the gift of Thanksgiving. To be thankful is a choice. And you and I have the power to make that choice. Would you lift your right hand to God and say me loud and clear, I choose to be thankful. Say so like you believe it. The loudest you can now. If you make that choice, then God will empower your choice and my choice. And today, I see God empowering our choice to be thankful. We've been told over and again, when things get tough and you don't know what else to do, Thanksgiving is what to do. I don't know who you are this morning. I don't know the challenge of life that you might be confronted with. Maybe your career, family, finances, your health, whatever it may be. I've got good news for you today. If you choose to be thankful, God will ensure your tank is full. Yeah. Can I hear believe in amen? Yeah. It's very important for us to join the psalmist. Psalm 139 and verse 14. This is very important. Psalm 139 verse 14. It says, I will praise thee. Why? For I am fearfully and what? Save me, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Say it again, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Please turn to your neighbor, convince him or her, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Shall they believe in amen? Therefore, as individuals, we must learn to be thankful. We must learn. We must make a choice and make it a lifestyle to be thankful. Think of this. We are told that the human body is made of 78 major organs. As you are seated or you are standing, wherever you may be right now, outside or outside or anywhere across the globe, that's you that is sitting down there or standing. We are told it's made up of 78 major organs. How many? In case we don't know all of them, at least we know some of them. These organs can be divided into two major parts. External organs that you and I can see physically with our eyes and the internal ones that we may not be able to see physically. Now, Imagine, let's start from the top. You have the head, can you touch your head please? You have the eyes, touch your eye, the ear. You can continue to name the organs, right? The ear, next. Yes, the nose, yes. 
What are you using to speak right now? Inside your mouth you have what? And then next what? And then you have your neck. Yes, and then keep going down your shoulder. Your hand. Lift your hand. Your fingers wave it. You can see how many organs are there in your body. Your waist, yes. Your knee, your leg, your toes. And then the list go on and on. God has given you wonderful feet that some persons are even wearing right now, platform as shoes. Giving you a wonderful head, you have men right here with all kinds of haircuts and ladies with all kinds of hairstyles. External organs. Now, let's go take a look at the internal ones that we may not be able to see right now with our physical eyes. You have the heart, isn't it? You have your brain, you have your, your scalp, your lungs. Can you see your lungs right now? Your liver, your intestine, the blood, your muscles. And then the list goes on and on. Minimum 78 major organs. How many of your organs are working? How many? Wave your hands. How many? So why should you and I not be thankful? Even if only one seems not to be working, take one out of 78. What percentage is that? Is that an A in an examination? Or a B? Or a C? So why should you and I not be thankful? Lift your right hand again to, to God and say with me, Father, Father I am thankful. Shall they believe in amen? amen? Do you know that we are told that your heart beats 115,000 times every day? 115,000 times every day. Has your heart ever stopped beating for one day? What's your answer, please? No. Definitely no. If it starts beating one minute, that will be the end. But that's not you. God has kept your heart and my heart beating since the day you were born. 115,000 times every day. I don't know how old you are. Please multiply that with your age. How many times has he been beaten? Hello? How many times has he been beaten? Can you calculate it? Say, my father, I thank you. You know, the challenge is most of the times, we only appreciate those organs when they are not functioning well. Sometime this year, I had a challenge with some of my tweet. And then for that period of time, I couldn't eat with one side of my mouth. Then I realized how important my teeth actually were. May you not lose any of your organs. I said, may you not lose any of your organs. You know, when you are eating, I never realized before then that I needed both sides of my mouth to be able to chew. At that period, I had to eat more slowly. Why? Because just one of the organs was challenged. But no matter where you may be right now, and no matter any organ of your body that may be challenged, with the mystery of thanksgiving, you are coming out. I said, you are coming out. Yeah. We've heard it said over and again. To be ungrateful is to be a grateful. And those who are grateful always end up great. You shall be great. Yeah. I said, you shall be great. Yeah. 
Psalm 34 and verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. How many times? How many times? How many times? All times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody says, well, I've been going through things, so you don't know my situation or condition. Hmm. The truth is, you might have gone through the waters and the fire that the Bible tells us, but you are going through. You are not staying there. You are going where? You are going through. You are not staying there. God is not through with you yet. And he is bringing you out. God's servant has said over and again, if you have lost anything, know that God is the reason why you have not lost everything. No matter what the enemy might have stolen from you before now, as you put the mystery of thanksgiving to work, it shall be restored to you sevenfold. I said it shall be restored to you sevenfold. A father in the faith, Papa Adeboye has said, thanksgiving is the glue that helps to firmly attach your blessings to you. It's a glue. It attaches your blessings to you. God's blessings in your life and my life shall never be lost. Why must we be thankful? Let's take a brief look at that right now. Why? Why must we be thankful? Number one, we must be thankful because God desires and demands it. God desires and demands our thanksgiving. Luke 17, remember the 10 lepers that were cleansed? And then one returned, verses 17 and 18. And Jesus said, verses 17 and 18, he says, 10 were cleansed. Only one returned. So where are the nine? He was waiting for their thanksgiving. The same way God is waiting for your thanksgiving and my thanksgiving. For putting bread in our nurseries, food on our table, and the list goes on and on. God is waiting. So we must thank God because he demands for it and he desires it. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 11. He says the redeemed of the Lord shall do what? Shall return. They shall return with thanksgiving. God is waiting for our thanksgiving. May he find us thankful. Why must we be thankful? Number two. Life, both physical and spiritual, is a gift. Life is a gift. Your physical and my physical life is a gift. How many of us contributed anything to our being born to this world? Did you make a contribution? Did you decide which country you wanted to be born into? Did you have any hand in deciding who your father or your mother biologically should be? Can you answer me, please? Hello? We didn't make any contribution. So life is a gift. And how about you and my spiritual life? Eternal life is a gift. Salvation is a gift. We didn't pay for it. So life, both physical and spiritual, is a gift. We must learn to focus on the giver so we can enjoy the gift. If we must enjoy the gift, our focus must be on who? On the giver. And thanksgiving helps us to focus on God who is the giver. The truth of the matter is you may not be where you want to be right now. But if you look back at where you were, you will discover that you are not where you used to be. A resident pastor here has told us over and again that whatever your present situation might be is somebody else's prayer point. 
Oh, I need a wife or a husband. Why not thank God that you are even qualified to be believing God for one? If you were leprous, God forbid, we'd be thinking of a husband or wife. Oh, I need children. Thank God you are even married and you qualify. Oh, I need a job. Thank God you are even a candidate. Oh, I need a breakthrough. Thank God your mind is even working. To think of that. So wherever you may be right now is someone else's prayer point. Therefore, give one unto who? Give thanks unto God. Life is a gift. Let's begin to focus on the giver. And then we'll keep on enjoying more of life. I can never forget the season when the enemy radically attacked my health, my physical body. I realized that much more than ever before that to sleep and wake up is the gift of God. You may set your alarm clock. It's not your clock that woke you up. Who woke you up? Who woke you up? Even this morning, who woke you up? And beginning from that season in my life, once my eyes opened in the morning, the first thing I say is, thank you, Jesus. Lift your hand again and say, thank you, Jesus. Say it like you mean it now. From the depth of your soul. Now personalize it. I thank you, Jesus. Shout it loud, amen. Every blessed day is a gift. Let's begin to focus on the giver. That you lay on the bed by yourself is a gift. I realize it then much more than ever before. Because to even lay on the bed, I needed assistance. To turn to any side of the bed, I needed assistance. To get out of bed, I needed assistance. To eat, to drink, to toilet, I needed assistance. And you, you easily go to the toilet and release and come out. No problem. Amen. Even as we are in service right now, some of you have gone to the toilet and come back. That is the gift of... Let's begin to focus on the giver. And so when challenging times come upon the world and various kinds of sicknesses and diseases that have never been begin to surface with the mystery of thanksgiving, you and I shall be exempted. Can I hear louder? Amen. We've had testimonies of miracles of all kinds of healings with the mystery and the weapon of thanksgiving, including the raising of the dead. It has happened before. It will happen again. I said it will happen again. A lady stood here, I'll never forget her testimony after service one day, and gave thanks to God 7,000 times because she was believing God for breakthrough maritally. The husband showed up. There are some of you under the sound of my voice today, no matter where you may be across the globe, believe in God for marital breakthroughs. If you will begin to put to work this mystery of thanksgiving, your marital settlement is settled. Yeah. Shiloh next year, by the grace of God, you will testify. Yeah. Why must we be thankful? One more and then finally. Thank God for what has happened. It preserves one, multiplies two, and perfects God's blessings upon our lives. When you are thankful, God's blessings upon our lives is preserved, one, is multiplied, two, and three, it is perfected. Malachi chapter 2 verses 1, 2, and 3 tells us, if you don't want God's blessings upon your life to be corrupted, then be thankful. That's one of the secrets 
of this commission from the early days of two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, seventeen people. First Sunday service I attended. We were about 17 people, children and adults. Like I usually share, each person, you have three benches to yourself, not three chairs, but three what? Benches. You sit on one bench, one person. Put your Bible, the one in front of you, and then your hand on the one behind you. Three benches, one person. We were all sitting together, children and adults. No children's job because we're all children of... But today, see what the Lord has done. Are you still sitting on benches now? We are here at the Fair Tabernacle, and very soon we are moving again today. You will be there. I said you will be there. When the ark is being dedicated, you will be there. Let me hear your loud and believing amen. Thing you cannot succeed in doing around the life of God's servant, Bishop Edekbo is complaining, murmuring, and grumbling. He lives a life of thanksgiving. Often, again and again, you hear him say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we all picked it up at home. It's the same thing. In my home, you are not allowed to complain. You can't even say something has finished. Everybody that works in the home with us know that. If something is about finishing in the house, you don't tell me or tell anybody there, oh, this is finished. It is plenty. <laughs> Food is what? Plenty. It is what? Plenty. And when you declare it, God will make it. And because we have always made that declaration, it has never finished. We have never lacked. We have never borrowed. Why? Because the law and the mystery of thanksgiving is being put to work. From today, nothing good will finish in your life. Yeah. Thanksgiving preserves. Thanksgiving multiplies. Jesus gave thanks and then the bread multiplied. John 6 and beginning from verse 6. It multiplied. I can never forget a family that gave thanks, they didn't have what to eat for dinner, and then they gathered the family around the table, gave thanks to God, served water at dinner, and they went to bed. Next morning, food physically arrived for them. Why? Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. Nothing good. We finish and we laugh again. And then it perfects our blessings. Now, as we begin to round up, it's important for us to take a look at how Thanksgiving enhances flourishing in hard times. How does it enhance our flourishing in hard times? How? Number one. Thanksgiving provokes continuous flow of fresh oil. According to Psalm chapter 92, verses 1 and 10, it provokes the flow of fresh oil. And this fresh oil keeps us flourishing in hard times. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Verses 12 and 13 now tells us. The righteous shall flourish. Say me, I will flourish. Say like you believe in. Verse 13, tell your neighbor you will flourish. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall do what? They will do what? Convince yourself, I will flourish. Point to your neighbor and tell him how you will flourish. Say loud, amen. amen. So thanksgiving provokes continuous flow of fresh oil, which in turn make us to flourish in and out of season. 
from this mountain of Shiloh 2023, the fresh oil of God will be going home with us. And with that, you and I will continue to flourish. No matter how hard it may become, therefore, for the word. When for the word they say there is a casting down, you will be saying what? When they are selling off their businesses, you will be? When they are going around borrowing, you will have to give? When they are losing their jobs, you will be having multiple jobs. Certain people understand my voice today with the mystery of thanksgiving. You have been believing God for miracle job. Some of you will get telephone alerts before the end of today. And it shall be an alert of good news. That business breakthrough you have been looking for shall be delivered into your hands. husband and wife you have been looking for and believing God for shall be delivered unto you. Yeah. Miracle babies with the mystery of thanksgiving shall be delivered. Yeah. There are some persons under the sound of my voice today, you have been believing God for the fruit of the womb. Shiloh next year you are returning with your testimonies. Yeah. You are returning with either your babies in your hand or in your... Shout it loud, amen. amen. Number two, how does Thanksgiving provoke our flourishing in hard times? When we are genuinely thankful, we keep provoking divine intervention. Thanksgiving provokes what? divine intervention. The world definitely will be going through a season of depression because of the hardness of times. But when you and I put the mystery of thanksgiving to work, we provoke divine word intervention. Beginning from this moment, make it a lifestyle. Just say, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Somebody might say, well, what if I don't feel like saying it? You don't have to feel like we don't walk by feelings. We walk by what? By faith. Keep saying it. Your feelings notwithstanding. Keep saying it. And then God will put a stamp of approval on it. It will provoke divine intervention. Before Lazarus came forth, what did Jesus say? Father, I do all. Somebody's Lazarus is coming forth. I said, somebody's Lazarus is coming forth. If you are the one, let your amen show it. That Lazarus may be concerning your job, your finances, your health, whatever it may be. That Lazarus we come forth. Divine intervention becomes our portion from today as we begin to engage the mystery of thanksgiving. God will arise in somebody's favor. If you are the one, let your amen show it. Number three, to live a thankful life is to live a life of joy and rejoicing. And that in turn supernaturally strengthens. It supernaturally does what? Strengthens. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. The joy of the Lord shall be your word, your strength. To be joyful is to be winful. To be joyful is to enjoy supernatural breakthroughs. When we live a life of joy and rejoicing, it strengthens us supernaturally. Luke chapter 10 and verse 21. John chapter 4, verses 32 to 34. 
And of course, they met Jesus Christ, the disciples. They said, ah, maybe some persons are giving him food to eat too. He said, my meat is to do the will of my father and to finish his work. Amen. Therefore, no matter your present situation, don't lose your joy. Don't do what? Please turn to your neighbor and tell him, how, don't lose your joy. On the other side, tell your neighbor, don't lose your joy. Now tell yourself, I shall not lose my joy. Say it again like you believe it. The loudest you can. Say, believe in amen. No matter your present situation, don't lose your joy. Because your miracle is right at the door. And you shall not miss it. The joy of the Lord will continue to be your strength. Think of this. You are believing God for a miracle spouse, but you are always frowning, carrying a long face, never smiling. When you are greeted, hello, hello. And then the face is so long. That brother or that sister will quickly turn away in the opposite direction. Why? No one wants to get married to someone who is never joyful. Smile now where you are. Put a smile on your face. Now laugh it out loud. Laugh, laugh. You know, you look different. Have you ever noticed that? You look different when you smile. You become more attractive when you smile. You become more handsome when you smile. Have you ever noticed before you take a picture, they will tell you smile. Tap your neighbor, tell him or her, smile, oh. God is on your side, oh. You will flourish, oh. Shout aloud, amen. amen. From today, no more long face. Amen. And finally, how to engage thanksgiving to flourish in hard times. Finally, to be thankful is to see the prophetic word come to pass. When you are thankful, the prophetic word is provoked to be fulfilled without stress in your life. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. And everything, give thanks. Hebrews 10. And then verse 36, it says, you will obtain the promise. What is the prophetic word for us at Shiloh 2023? It says, I am redeemed to flourish in hard times. How about you? Personalize it now. I am redeemed to flourish in hard times. Say it again like you believe it. One more time. That prophetic word will come to pass in somebody's life. Oh. I said that prophetic word will come to pass in your life. No matter how hard the times may be out there in the world, as for you and I, we shall flourish. We shall Turn to your neighbor, tell him how you will flourish. Oh. Now tell yourself, I will flourish. As long as we keep appreciating the source, who is God, we will always easily connect with his resources. God's resources are more than enough to fulfill all your need and my need. But to connect with those resources that are abundant, we must put the mystery of thanksgiving to work. Say loud, amen. amen. Therefore, upon this mountain of Shiloh 2023, I curse the spirit of murmuring. Amen. Everything that grumbles and complains is here by cost. More morning comes to an end in our lives. 
and the place of murmuring, it shall be thanks given. Therefore, in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I decree the supernatural and speedy fulfillment of the prophetic word for Shiloh this year in everybody's life. If you receive it, say, I receive it. Louder, I say, I receive it. Rise up on your feet right now, everybody, wherever you may be. Raise your right hand to God. Shout it loud. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Say it again and again and again and again. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I wave your hands to the Lord and shout it loud. Say after me, my Father. I thank you. Say, believe in Amen. The grace to live a lifestyle of thanksgiving becomes everyone's portion. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.